the ranks of this university and has been at the forefront of academic leadership in key areas. Ahead of our chairperson coming up to give us his welcome address and introduce our speaker, I'll kindly ask that we all rise and sing the UCC anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seat. With a warm round of applause, help me welcome Professor John Senyako Brampong, Vice Chancellor of UCC, and he's chairing this event. Thank you. Professor Mrs. Rusmong Abuajua Abuhin, Pro Vice Chancellor, University of Cape Coast, Mr. Jeff Te Emmanuel Unyame, Registrar UCC, Osabere Marquesiata II, Omar Hin of Ogwa Traditional Area, Nana Kwekwenu, the third Marehin of Oga traditional area, Nananum, Pro Vice Chancellors of Sister Universities, Registrars of Sister Universities present, Reverend Professor Emmanuel Adobin, former Vice Chancellor, University of Cape Coast, 
Professor Joseph Gatte Ampia, former Vice Chancellor, University of Cape Coast. Professor David Kofi Esiman, former Vice Chancellor, Kofodia Technical University. Professor George K.T. Odro, former Pro Vice Chancellor, University of Cape Coast. Professor Dora Francisca Edubuando, former Pro Vice Chancellor, UCC. Provost, Deans, Directors of Academic and Administrative Units, Heads of Departments and Heads of Halls, Members of Convocation, Staff and Students, Distinguished Invited Guests, Friends in the Media, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good afternoon to you all. On behalf of the Governing Council, management, staff and students of the University of Cape Coast, I welcome you to today's professorial inaugural lecture to be delivered by Professor Ernest Kofi Davis. We wish to extend a hearty welcome to all our special guests, family and friends of Professor Davis. We say Akwaba. We appreciate your presence and support. Distinguished invited guests, within the Academy, inaugural lectures provide the occasion for universities to acknowledge the appointment or promotion of academics to the rank of professor, introduce them, and provide them with the opportunity to engage with the university community. An inaugural lecture is therefore a significant milestone in academics' career, recognizing their promotion to professor. Ladies and gentlemen, these lectures form a key part of the traditions of the University of Cape Coast, where we create the platform to enable our assist professors to showcase to the university-wide audience their research or their perspectives on issues interest to them. Each lecture provide opportunity for academics to share, among others, their achievement in research, innovation, engagement, and teaching activities before an audience of members of the university community and the general public. As you already know, it is the only time an academic gets to profess what he knows or thinks without being questioned. Ladies and gentlemen, though Professor Ernest Kofi Davis was promoted to the professorial rank in 2018, it is today that he will celebrate this important personal milestone with a broad audience, including members of the public, family, friends, colleagues, both old and new. Professor Davis will synthesize his scholarship and contribution to knowledge in his field of specialization, which is mathematics education, in the inaugural lecture captioned social cultural issues, a missing ingredient in mathematics curriculum development and delivery in Ghana. Professor Ernest Kofi Davis will deliver the lecture in a simplified manner so that individuals who do not belong to the same field with him would understand what he has come to say. Ladies and gentlemen, before Professor Davis steps forward to deliver his inaugural lecture, 
permit me to read his profile. Professor Ernest Kofi Davis is an astute academic, experienced educator, and a visionary leader. He is a professor of mathematics education and the current provost of the College of Education Studies, University of Cape Coast. He is one of the premier professors of mathematics education in Ghana. His areas of research interest include social, social and cultural issues in mathematics education and teaching and learning of mathematics content. He is dedicated to promoting quality education through innovative approaches to curriculum development and delivery models and a strong advocate for reflective teaching. Concerning his education, Professor Davis gained admission to the University of Cape Coast in 1996, where he pursued Bachelor of Education Mathematics degree and graduated in 1999. He completed Master of Arts in Mathematics Education at Hiroshima University, Japan, in 2004, Gamba Kudasai. He completed PhD program in Mathematics Education at Monash University in Melbourne, Australia, in 2010. To sharpen his administrative skills, Professor Davis received support from the University of Cape Coast to enroll in a program leading to diploma in management of higher education institutions from the Gallery International Management Institute in Israel in 2023. Academic career. He was appointed a lecturer at the Institute of Education in 2004. By dint of hard work, he was promoted to the ranks of senior lecturer, associate professor, and professor in 2010, 2015, and 2018, respectively. In 2007, while pursuing his PhD degree in Monash University, Australia, Professor Davis was also offered the opportunity to experience different academic culture when he was appointed research assistant at the Department of Science, Mathematics, and Technology Education, Faculty of Education in the university. He was a member of the research team that investigated parents' involvement in their children's numeracy and literacy education in 2008. Professor Davis has taught many postgraduate and undergraduate courses in the College of Education Studies in the university. He has also supervised Reverend PhDs and 25 m theses. He has assessed and continues to assess PhD theses for both local and international universities. Professor Davis has made scholarly contributions to the field of mathematics education with 50 peer-reviewed articles in high-impact journals. He has also published four book chapters and 10 technical reports. He is a reviewer of a number of international and local journals. He is the editor-in-chief of the Ghana Journal of Education, Issues and Practice, and article editor 
for stage open. He has mentored a number of young researchers through the activities of the Adatic UCC, a research group devoted to research in innovative teaching and learning at the College of Education Studies, UCC, and affiliated with the World Education Researchers Association, which he coordinates. He has been involved in several teacher education curricular curriculum development and re review projects in the country for, most, for almost two decades as either a member or a leader. Professor Davis has led teams to develop proposals that have won several curriculum intervention programs for the University of Cape Coast. He has also been involved in many local and international research projects funded by international agencies such as the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, USAID, the NIDA, just to mention a few. Professor Davis' experience and research have culminated in the development of a three-tier model for teaching mathematics in context at the foundational learning level, which he published in 2017. Administrative experience and contributions. Professor Ernest Kofi Davis has held several leadership positions within the university in the past 10 years. This include the provost, College of Education Studies, Founding Dean, School of Educational Development and Outreach, Deputy Director, Institute of Education, and Assessment Coordinator at the Institute of Education. His leadership brought phenomenal growth in each of these outfits, boards and committees. Professor Davis has said and continue to serve on many boards and committees at both university and in national levels, either as, a, as chairman or as a member. Awards, professional membership, and internationalization. Professor Ernest Kofi Davis has won several awards, and these include the Japan International Cooperation Agency Scholarship, Monash International Postgraduate Research Scholarship, British Academy Visiting Scholar Award, and two-time Visiting Scholar to Melbourne Graduate School of Education, Australia. He is a member of several professional bodies at both the local and international levels such as Ghana Mathematics Society, Ghana Education Research Association, World Education Research Association, Southern Africa Association of Mathematics, Science and Technology Education, among others. Professor Davis is a member of International Research Group on Values in Mathematics Education family, and religious life. Professor Davis is married to Mrs. Ethel Drida Charlotte Davis. They have four children, Emmanuel, Ernestina, Ida, and Jennifer. He is a practicing Christian who currently worships with Pedro Rebration Family Chapel in Cape Coast. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Chair. Before this, um, our speaker comes to deliver the lecture, I'll call on Messi Achianu and her team from the Department of Music to give us a musical interlude. Let's welcome them with a round of applause.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to listen to the inaugural lecture by Professor Ernest Kofi Davis, and he will be speaking on the topic, Social Cultural Issues, a Missing Ingredient in Mathematics Curriculum Development and Delivery in Ghana. With a round of applause, let's welcome Professor Ernest Kofi Davis.
Okay. I think it's fine. Thank you very much. Um, Professor Chair, permit me to stand on the protocol already established to deliver my inaugural lecture on the theme, Sociocultural Issues, a Missing Ingredient in Mathematics Curriculum Development and Delivery in Ghana. In today's presentation, I will highlight the mathematics achievement of students in sub-Saharan African countries. I will also highlight the place of local aspect of mathematics in curriculum development and delivery, focusing on everyday mathematical representations and practices, language, and also touch on values. I will position these as very important but missing ingredient in mathematics curriculum development and delivery in Ghana. I will, end, I will then share my contribution to promoting culturally responsive education, focusing on mathematics teaching, and end my presentation with some conclusions and implications for policy and practice. I would like to proceed my presentation by sharing with you how the journey started. My journey to become mathematics educator began after my national service when I had to choose which university and program uh, to continue my education in. My idea with two of my very close friends, Professor Isaac Ayensu, he is here with us, and Dr. Kizi Hayford, was to go to tech to do something in computing because in the late 80s and early 90s, that was uh, the order of the day. But my late father said I should wait for his input. He told me he had heard Eja Adamomensa Bakano, the son, is at the university. So he would go and look for him and listen to what he has to say. I thought about me, Eja Adamomensa's son would be happy to hear that somebody wants to go and do computing. So I wasn't worried. He came back and the story was different. He said, I have met Eja Adamomensa's son. And he is saying, you will have a future in this program. It's a new program. He handed a sheet of paper on which Eja Anamomensesan, who is with us here, Professor Anamomensesan, had written the mathematics. So I looked at the paper and stared at my father's face for a moment. And I said, OK, my father and Eja Anamomensesan, whom I later got to know as Professor Anamomensesan, are saying that. So I will be. So I decided to enroll on the Beard Maths program here at UCC. In the course of the program, I met many wonderful lecturers. But, you know, our era was the Beatle and the Pedro era. We, 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 we didn't have a lot of flashy cars around. But this lecturer will come to lecture very well dressed in his style, very well prepared. He wouldn't dictate any notes, but will end up writing a lot. And I had an A in his course. I said, I want to be like this lecture. That was Professor Ousabo Asari. I said, I want to be like this man. I inquired from my friends, what does it take to become a lecturer? They said, you need either a first class or second class upper. So right from the first year, I said, I'm working towards 
first class. So the student here, I want to tell you that effort is key to success. It's not how smart you are, the effort, consistency. So, at the end of the program, by the grace of God, I had a first class. Professor S.K. Japan gave me a job in 2000 after my national service. I had the opportunity to go to Japan two years later to do my master's, and then three years later, I had the opportunity to do my PhD. Throughout my career as an academic, one thing has engaged me. That is mathematics achievement of students in sub-Saharan African countries, including Ghana, of course. If you look at the map I've projected, this is the map of countries that, has stu that have student performance mean score of 358 and above. So countries that are performing about okay in mathematics. This is the world map. You see that it looks awkward. Africa is not there. Africa is not there. And we all know our story. Ghana attempted trends in international study of in mathematics and science twice and where our performance in each case was so poor that we had to stop trying. So, performance of students in mathematics in countries in sub-Saharan Africa and ethnic minority student has always been described as, as abysmal as compared to those in developed countries. Studies in Ghana here have shown that competency levels of our students do not provide adequate foundation for opportunities for further studies and professions in STEM-related areas in future. Mr. Chairman, the question that begs for answers is, why is this so? Why is the performance in mathematics of ethnic minority students in developed countries and students from sub-Saharan African countries always identify as poor? This is a very important problem we need to think about because if we want to train students who are relevant to the current demands of our 21st century, then the student will require adequate skills, mathematical skills and proficiency. They need adequate mathematical skills and proficiency. Otherwise, they can't survive the 21st century uh, demands. If you want to think about critical thinking, logical reasoning, and problem solving, we can't do so without mathematical competence, without adequate uh, skills and competency in mathematics. But the good news is that the almighty God the creator knew that everybody needs some level of mathematics to survive. So God put mathematics in everybody, in nature. In fact, even animals, I believe, have mathematical instinct. What will it take a dog or a goat to move from where I am to the gate and come back to its destination? 180 degrees 10, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. If the gold gets it wrong, the gold, will not, the gold cannot get to this destination. So turn 180 degrees this way or that way before it can come here. What does it take for a dog or even any animal to see that it has lost its babies? or its young ones, a sheep that goes to graze, coming back, 
looking for its young one. It takes counter. Even animals have ways of matching. Number. So mathematics is in nature. In fact, the naturalists in mathematics will argue that every culture is able to generate its own mathematics by engaging in six universal activities. And these six universal activities include counting, locating, measuring, designing, playing, and explaining. And according to Bishop, mathematics as a cultural object is derived in humans doing this activity in sustained manner. Let us reflect for a moment whether we, don't, we, we are not generating our own mathematics. So if I want to show you the location of the lorry station, in my culture, I will tell you to pay attention to certain landmarks. I will tell you move. You see the building. You see the tree. Kalewole Sarah. Then you ask, so you see the station. In other cultures, they will tell you to move at a bearing, move certain kilometers, and so on and so forth. In both cases, are we not locating? We are locating. The games that we play, the rules are mathematical. And the power of mathematics as a cultural object lay in its ability to explain. What does it take to explain when the next Easter will happen? Mathematics. The illiterate woman who has never stepped foot in the classroom, what does it take for the illiterate woman to explain whether business has been profitable or she has lost? Mathematics. So mathematics must be understood as a kind of cultural object that cultures generate. Mr. Chairman, to buttress my point, I hope my presentation is high. Yes, to buttress my point, I will show you this picture of something interesting. This was a press statement by our current president when they were in opposition. 2008, when MPP lost. 100 days later, he shared his view on the state of the economy. My interest is in the unit Mr. President used then. So he talks about Gare and the unit is Olonka. He talks about yeah, the unit Mr. President used to communicate the cost of living was tuba. He talked about plantain, fingers. He talks about tomatoes, small fruit. Where is the SI unit that we study in the classroom? I picked this from the newspapers. It's online. I will give another example for Beverage Consumers and Bar Owners Association. Communicating new prices is thought, per thought. And I like the author. The author says, local measure. Finally, I pick this. The wholesale price of goods and commodity, August 2020. My interest is in the units the author use. We have crates, we have bag, we have tubers. Now, this shows the local aspect of mathematics and challenges the notion that the Western international mathematics, which we experience in school, is the only form of mathematics. Indeed, ethnomathematics researchers will argue that there are two forms of mathematics. Mathematics with capital M, which is the school mathematics, and mathematics with small m, which is the everyday mathematical representations and practices. 
This set with Vygotsky's distinction between two concepts, everyday concept and scientific concept. The small m resonates with the everyday concept, which Vygotsky and his followers claim that is acquired by participating in sociocultural activities. It's acquired spontaneously as we participate in sociocultural activities. And school mathematics, which is acquired through systematic lesson delivery. But the trick here is that the everyday mathematics forms the living knowledge for the development of the school mathematics. And the school mathematics, once it's fully developed, also modifies the everyday mathematics. So if you look at the picture I've projected, you see that the everyday in the school, they are sitting side by side. They are sitting side by side. My question is, is that what we see in our school curriculum? Is that what we see in our textbook? How many of us have seen Olonka in any textbook in Ghana? So the cultural function of mathematics is ignored and denied. But then, if everyday mathematics forms the basis for the development of school mathematics, if students' relevant previous knowledge, or we teach from known to unknown, and the student known is everyday, and it has no place in school curriculum development, then on what are we building the mathematics? Perhaps nothing. What does it mean for curriculum development and implementation? Mr. Chairman, because of the fact that we deny and ignore the cultural function of mathematics, students are tempted to devalue their everyday mathematical representations and practices which should rather form the basis for the development of school mathematics. So, and they are very much aware of the differences between the two. I interviewed some students, and they told me that they use kilograms in the school and margin cap at, school, at home. Others said, home mathematics, we don't write, but school mathematics, we write with either pencil or pen. School mathematics is studied in English. Home mathematics is different. So the students are aware of the two systems of mathematics. The students, like ethno-mathematics researchers, are aware that mathematics goes beyond the Western or international mathematics. I call it international mathematics because there is a collection of cultures. In fact, Africa, we also contributed. Pyramids, they are from Africa, Egypt. If you look at algebra from Arab, so it's actually uh, appropriately called international mathematics. Mr. Chairman, apart from the There are also linguistic issues. Let us remember that mathematics education begins in a language, progresses in language, may fall or succeed because of language, and outcomes are assessed using language. But then, we don't pay attention to linguistic issues at all. I enjoy analyzing children's error patterns. This was a question that was given to a child. What is the difference between 562 and 300? And the child wrote, the difference is that 562 is greater than 300. Is this child wrong? But the teacher marked the child wrong. 
You cannot separate language from cognition. You cannot, the, the brain uses language to work, whether sign language or whatever. So if you look at this child, in the local language, many a can language, if you talk about insonsone, if the child is thinking insonsone, does insonsone connote qualitative difference, quantitative difference? It doesn't connote quantitative difference. It connotes only qualitative difference. So I guess if somebody asks you, Eben Sunsuni in our 700, in the 70, you will not say 630. You say perhaps zero. Because AE7 will have zero being AE7 equals zero, Quentin Sunsuni is zero. <laughs> so what is happening is that curriculum development appears to play down on the cultural function of mathematics. It plays down on the cultural function of mathematics. Interestingly, with the curriculum developers ignoring the cultural function of mathematics and teachers also trying hard to stop the home from the classroom, students still bring the everyday into the teaching learning situation. They don't leave what they know at the door of the classroom. They bring it inside. I have this example to share. I interview a teacher, some teachers, and ask them whether the, the student bring the home into the classroom. And if they do, how do they manage it? And this teacher told me, because the previous knowledge they have in mathematics come from the, from the house. So they bring ideas in the classroom, examples like tens of sharing, sharing and the fraction. So the teacher wanted to say that once you talk about sharing, they bring all sorts of things. And I agree with the teacher. I watched a lesson in which the teacher was introducing halves. The teacher started nicely by asking the children, so my mom or pan or then you and chat, I bet you then. Assuming your mother gave you bread to share with your sibling, how were you going to go about it? In the teacher's mind, he was thinking the children would break, would say I will break it into two equal half. But the children didn't give any of such answers. All who attempted the question said, Mamanibi. <laughs> the one who was close got up and said, Mechime Basana Mama no so to this child, even sharing between two people could lead to thefts. What did the teacher do out of frustration? The teacher picked sticks, a stick, showed it to the student one hole and broke it into two, say one half, one half. What, are, what about what they had brought into the lesson situation with? What about their everyday notions and representations they had brought into the teaching situation? The teacher swept it under that. Remember, that is their small M. And that is supposed to be the basis for the development of the big M. But the teacher swept it under the carpet. I also watched a lesson on money. You know, in 2007, when something happened in Ghana, we, changed, we redenominated our currency. And children who were not born at that time still use the old currency. So this teacher was teaching money. He had, the, the, the setup was nice. He had a corner store where the student would pick the currency note, name it, and go buy things from the corner, corner shop. And then through that, do some arithmetic. So the first student came, picked the red notes, one Ghana. Others would say one Ghana. The student would move to the corner. Another one came Others came, we got to a turn of one girl who picked the blue, five Ghana, and said, 50,000. And the teacher said, hey, hey, why are you bringing the olden days to the classroom? I know why you are doing this. You sell in the market. You sell in the market. The teacher lost the opportunity to connect 
the money to the practice of using the old currency to name the new one. He lost the opportunity. The child was embarrassed. And this, one of the teachers articulated the example I have given. When asked, how do you manage the everyday when you find it in the classroom? He said, I try to help them to put aside culture from the house and learn the one in school because assessment will be based on what is in, what is learned in school, but not what is learned in the house. So tests is driving everything. Now, the question is, if we are treating the student this way, how can the student build their mathematical proficiency? Because if you talk about mathematical proficiency, you are looking at five ingredients. Conceptual understanding, procedural fluency, adaptive reasoning, productive disposition, and strategic competence. The conceptual understanding is the kind of understanding that will always force the student to link the concept you present before him or her to an already known example or experience. So if the student experience is home, and they are saying the home is not allowed here, what are we doing to the student? We are disabling the student ability to develop mathematical proficiency in ways that will position them to perform the way the whole world is performing. So the student we label weak, are they weak? Or perhaps we have to rethink our whole mathematics education. Mr. Chairman, this problem is a, a global problem. Barton, 2008. Barton is from New Zealand. He argues that the challenge we face as mathematics educators in the context in which we find ourselves is making a link between in-school mathematics and out-of-school mathematics. And how this is related to dilemma of teaching indigenous or minority children. An international subject like school mathematics, while we keep the integrity of minority or indigenous worldview. In other words, how do we teach mathematics such that the student will be by mathematica? Because if I teach the student money, drawing the student's attention to the number written on the notes, the student will go out there to see, meet mothers who communicate in the old currency. How do you teach the student to be able to switch? How do we do that? If you teach the student that half means equal half from international perspective, how do we do it such that if the student goes home and then something is broken into two and he picks one part and the mother says, go and bring the other half, you will know that that part is actually not half. But in everyday sense, once things are broken into two, we say one, uh, one is half and the other is half. Even if it's 250 and then uh, 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 <laughs> 250 three fifth is half. So we need to pay attention to the cultural function of mathematics. In fact, the end result is that the curriculum we develop does not pay attention to the cognitive mode of the student. The cognitive mode, the curriculum crafters assume most often does not sit with the realities of the child. Mr. Chairman, I like this quote from Shunik. It's old, but I like it. He says, it is taking for granted 
that mathematics learning is embedded in a cultural context. Yet, there are many cultural contexts within a society. So, everyone does not approach adding and subtracting in the same way. So, he argues that it's necessary for us to specify the necessary bridging structures between the home and the school, and between one concept and another. That enables the child to learn mathematics. So, we need to build student mathematical competence based on what they already know. Mr. Chairman, I have contributed to this discussion through scholarly works. These are some of the contributions. The first four I have projected shows the struggle our students go through because of linguistic and cultural influence. This one shows how the linguistic and cultural influences exclude them, deny them access to school mathematics. If access to education goes beyond bringing the student to the school space, then we have to ensure that when we give them access to school, we also give them access to school concepts. And we can do so by paying attention to the cultural function of mathematics. Mr. Chairman, the last paper which I have uh, pointed to, in this paper, we found out that many of the concepts we claim students do not know. In fact, the students are performing poorly in. In fact, our concept, the students have very little exposure to. They have very little opportunity to learn because of our policy of mass promotion. So the students accumulate a lot of cognitive deficits. So by the time the student in, is in class five, the student cannot even perform class three tax. Many of the things we claim they don't know are things they have very little opportunity to learn. Mr. Chairman, at this stage I have managed to position, problematize culture and language. I will turn my attention to values in mathematics. You would all agree with me that values are key in character modeling. I can see my uh, biology teacher here. He put a lot of values in us. And my, my, my mates, some of them are laughing. Mr. Cosby Ishen, one of my best teachers. So the, the, in fact, he put a lot of good values in us. I will talk about that later. Values are key. That is why. We always make sure that we inculcate appropriate values in our children to become responsible citizens. In mathematics education, too, there are mathematical values that prepare students as lifelong learners in mathematics. CR 2019 argues that value in math values in mathematics is a cognitive variable that regulates the individual's activation of cognitive skills and affective dispositions in complementary ways. So it suggests that values drive both achievement and interests. For example, if a student values problem solving in mathematics, what is going to happen is that the student achievement will improve and the laugh or interest in the subject improves. So values are key because of its ability to deal with both cognition and affect. The new curriculum, I saw value in it and I was so excited, but my excitement was cut short. I realized that the values that have been projected in the new curriculum actually are peripheral to mathematics. They, uh, they can, at best, be described as general educational values. 
they are not values that will position the student as lifelong learners in mathematics. In mathematics, Bishop, I'm quoting Bishop 88 because that's what all value studies refer to. He did the first study on values. He argues that there are three pairs of values that drives mathematics achievement. And he argues that each of the pairs is complementary. So the first, you need the two in each case. So the first pair, he has objectivism and rationalism. And this value relates to the nature of mathematics. The objectivism value has to do with helping the student to appreciate that in mathematics, we can symbolize anything and treat as if it's real. So we call something infinity. We can we just symbolize infinity, add, do operations with infinity. But the complement is rationalism. That in mathematics, you have to be rational. The use of syllogistic reasoning, the premise must always be right. Otherwise, you end up getting things wrong. The next relate to sentiment or attitude. We have control versus progress. So through mathematics learning, the student must appreciate the need to control mathematical ideas if they want to progress because of the role of mathematics in everyday life in their progression from one level to another. The complement of control is progress. The student must understand that for them to control mathematics, they will fail. They might fail. But failure should be treated as temporary. They failed because the data they needed to make progress at a time of task wasn't available. So once they get the data, they should be able to progress. So failure is temporary. The last, which relates to sociology, is mystery and openness. So the mystery value relates to the mystic associated with the study of math. At times you see the date coming in a beautiful pattern, but then you can always explain the number of years that will happen. That is the openness side of it. Mr. Chairman, my research has shown that these values are not projected in teaching and also in textbooks in a balanced manner. So what does that mean? We are not orienting our students to values that will position them as lifelong learners because of the way we deny and ignore the cultural, sociocultural function of mathematics. In this study, I and some colleagues did that in 2015. It was published in 2017. We found out that valuing among our students constitute peripheral values. They are extrinsic to mathematics. This one is very recent. In fact, it was published this year. We looked at values that are implicit in the best-selling HS, SHS book. And we saw that values such as rationalism, mystery, that position the student as problem solver is rather low. So what are we doing? The textbooks are not projecting the values that will help the student to be lifelong learners. In this study, we looked at values across grade levels. And we saw that even what, I mean, what the primary school student will value will, di will differ from what the SHS student will value. Meaning that values are influenced by context. And this study, we saw that there is value misalignment between student and teachers. So student and teachers value different things. So if sociocultural issues, including language and values, 
are not given the attention, then we are disabling the student's ability to develop mathematical proficiencies that will enable them to perform the way other students from developed countries are performing. Mr. Chairman, at this stage, I have, I, I guess I've succeeded in positioning sociocultural issues as missing variable in mathematics curriculum development and delivery. Permit me to share with you my contribution in dealing with this issue. I have proposed a three-tier model in teaching mathematics in context. This model requires teachers to take students through three cycles in order to draw on their everyday mathematical representations and practices to scaffold the understanding of school mathematics. Drawing on the works of Bishop, Vygotsky, and Lancy, these three theoretical perspectives helps me to position mathematics teaching and learning as a kind of metacognitive activity that is influenced by culture and values. I must say that this work, as the chairman said, has been published in the For the Learning of Mathematics journal. Drake, this journal is a Scopus journal. Because Drake's want to hear Scopus. I have also exposed it to different audiences in Scotland in 2014, um, Washington, D.C., 2016, at uh, AERA. I've also exposed it uh, at a conference in Hong Kong, in Australia, and recently at the World Conference on Transformative Education here on the UCC campus. So the tears which all must happen in a learning, I mean, in the teaching situation, begin with enculturating the student into their own culture of mathematics. So stage one, you get the student to experience the mathematics the way they would have experienced it. Stage two is the transition stage, where you prepare the student mind to accommodate expansion in their schema of mathematics or in their notion of mathematics to include the international notions. So at this stage, Students are asked to look at how the concept they experience relate to the international orientation. That helps them to see the local aspect of their knowledge. Stage three is what, where many teachers start today. That is the stage you induct or acculturate the student into the Western international mathematics, drawing on their experience in stage one. Mr. Chairman, teachers have used this model to teach. In this lesson, the teacher was introducing halves. So he started by giving students tasks that would evoke their funds of knowledge, the knowledge they have acquired from the society about halves. And you see from student work what they came to the learning situation with. This is half. This is half. This is half. And you can see. Now, you can see clear evidence of cultural interference here. Once you give them group, they shade half of each of the members of the group. If you have four balls of kinky in a bowl, it's unlikely for the child to take two. So, here, the teacher would have to work hard to get the student to the school notions. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, at the transition stage, by the time the lesson ended, the teacher asked the student to go and look at how half his experience elsewhere. So stage one, the teacher accepted what the student had brought into the learning situation. Stage two, the student had to go and look at how half is experienced worldwide. And they came saying that, Chemo bien pepe per, meaning break into two equal halves. So that was where the teaching started. Teacher said, now 
you are modeling half based on Cheme Bien Pepe So he gave the tax to the student again. And look at how the notion changed. So this one became this for group one, you see before. And then this one has now become this. And if you look at this, this one has become that. This one has become that. So the three-tier model shows that drawing on the student everyday conceptions and practices help them to understand concept meaningfully, rather than breaking two things into two and counting in halves, as suggested in the syllabus. This model has been used to teach large numbers of students. In fact, uh, my PhD student, Daniel Bomita, used it to teach 24, had 12, 200 and 860 participants. 430 in experimental group, and then the same number in control group. After giving the teachers training in the use of the three model for teaching in context, we give them the opportunity to teach and we interview them. The result showed clearly that students who were taught in context performed better. If you look at the error pattern, you see that this one is easy. Almost all students, those who were taught using the, what is proposed in the syllabus, and then those in the experiment, they all did well. But as the problem became complex, the students who were taught using the conventional approach began to perform poorly. So this is half. So those in the uh, three-tier group, many of them, saw that it's half. So this one, it tells you that about 85% of them had it correct. Whereas this, only about 9% had it correct. And as the number, I mean, the question became complex, those in the conventional group were not able to cope. The most difficult question was 3F, half. You see that none from the conventional group was able to get it. But a three-tier group, about 22% got it right, because 77.9% failed in that question. And before the experiment, the, the, my student test to make sure that, tested to make sure that they were comparable. And at the end of the day, the, the, the results showed that those who were taught in context did far better. What are teachers saying about this model? One of the teachers said, oh, it helped us because our new curriculum says our teaching should be child-centered. And this model is more child-centered than we used to teach. This teacher said, I think it's really good because the children have come to appreciate that they did a lot of learning by themselves. So it wasn't like the teacher is teaching by telling them. The major weakness had to do with class control. Because you know children are energetic. And once they, are, they can connect with the concept, they have a lot of energy. Mr. Chairman, permit me to skip this because you said all. The end of my long story, conclusions and implications. Mr. Chairman, student labeled as weak and eventually excluded from former education may be so labeled, not because they are weak in mathematics, but because curriculum development and delivery system continue to ignore and deny the existence of local cultural aspect of mathematics. That is, the cultural function of mathematics. Ignoring the cultural function of mathematics in curriculum development and delivery has resulted in situations where cognitive modes assumed in the curriculum do not reflect the everyday realities of the student because of the colonial history of mathematics curriculum used in our schools today. Let's remember that 
we inherited our curriculum from our colonial masters. So they didn't think about your context or culture. Once you are colonized, everything about you becomes irrelevant. My pain is that school mathematics and religion came in the same slave boat. We have contextualized religion. Today, we interpret the Bible from Ghanaian cultural perspective. What about mathematics? The three-tier model offers an opportunity to address this problem by drawing children's everyday mathematical conception to make the teaching of the subject relevant, especially at the foundational level. I'm saying foundational level because the three-tier model requires language flexibility. Values in mathematics should be projected in a balanced manner, both in curriculum and curriculum materials, such as textbook. Mr. Chairman, I want to make a statement on textbook. It's dear to my heart, and this is a fine opportunity for me to do so. As invisible teachers, for both teachers and students, the textbooks are the invisible teachers of both the teacher and the student. Because teachers consult textbooks, students consult textbooks, researchers consult textbooks. Textbooks should be developed to support the delivery of the quality education we are yearning for. We need to develop good textbooks that are socio-culturally driven if you want to achieve what we have set out to achieve as a nation. We need to explore innovative approaches to teaching of mathematics to make the teaching and learning relevant. So my colleague mathematicians and mathematics educators here, we have to adopt the exotic strategies to make our teaching culturally relevant. Classroom environment should be modeled to support modern approaches to teaching. Classrooms that were used during the three hours cannot support the education in the 21st centuries. You saw the picture I showed. Such classroom cannot support the kind of education we are pro pro projecting. The government's agenda to modernize classrooms at the basic school level should transcend political generation. End of my story. Thank you. Can we do it another time for Professor Davis whilst he takes a seat? He will be back pretty shortly to acknowledge a few individuals here. Before that, Mercy Achianu and her team from the Department of Music will help us with another musical interlude. Let's welcome them with a round of applause.
mercy. Please welcome Professor Davis back on stage to acknowledge a few individuals. Let's give him a round of applause. I needed to ask the time because I know people want to go to church. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, yes, I hope my. I'm sure it will come. I wish to dedicate this presentation to. Emeritus, late Emeritus Professor Bishop, Alan Bishop, who devoted his whole life, professional life, on dealing with issues around culture, ethnicity, and mathematics. He happens to be my PhD supervisor, one of my PhD supervisors, Emeritus Professor Alan John Bishop. He passed on last November. He died last November, so I dedicate this lecture to his memory. He didn't believe that people from third world, people like us, are stupid. He felt people have misunderstood the way we see our world, and they have to understand the way we see our world in order to present mathematics in ways that will make sense to us. So I dedicate this work to him. Mr. Chairman, I have met many people throughout my journey. I have, therefore, I enjoyed support of large number of people. I may not be able to name each and individual, each and every individual, but I want to start by thanking everybody who found time to attend this project program to support me. I know today is Easter Thursday. Many people are planning to travel, but you have found time to come. I wasn't expecting this number. Thank you so much. I wish to express my sincere gratitude to my parents, Mr. Late Mr. Emmanuel Davies and Mrs. Elizabeth Davis for all their hard work in making me who I am today. May the Lord bless them and give them good rest. To the Vice Chancellor, I want to say a big thank you for giving me the opportunity to present my inaugural lecture. That is uh, my Vice Chancellor, Prof. Johnson Nyako Buampo. Thank you very much for this opportunity and other opportunities I have enjoyed. I wish to thank all past vice chancellors. In fact, I've worked with six vice chancellors. Professor SK Japan, he gave me a job in 2000. Professor Emmanuel Ado Obin, I, I call him the, my lucky vice chancellor because he gave me a job as a lecturer in 2004. He signed my scholarship to Japan in 2002, gave me steady leave, gave me steady leave again in 2007 to Australia. Thank you very much, my lucky vice chancellor. I wish to thank all the other vice chancellors, Prof. Didi Kupole, Prof. Jane Nanopokwajiman, Professor Gatampia, my mentor, he taught me how to write. So if you see my old papers in the uh, early 2000s, Davis and Pia. And I must thank Prof. Adobin for asking him to take charge of me. Prof. Adobe will not remember. After he had taken me as a lecturer, he said, Joseph, Munshana Mame. 
I wish to thank all the past Pro Vice Chancellors and the present one, Professor Mrs. Rusmond Bohine. She is my big sister, confident, everything. When things are tough, I turn to her. She gives me an idea. Prof, thank you for all the support. The same applies to all the vice chancellors, the pro vice chancellors, Professor GKT Odro. Even if I call him at midnight one, he will respond. Prof Nelson Bois, Professor Dora Francisca Edubuando, my sweet big sister. Thank you very much. I wish to thank Mr. Jeff Tei Onyame. I met Uncle Jeff when I was a student. My 90-year group is here. And I'm still working with him as a colleague. He, counsels and co he, he counseled me as a student and continue, I continue to enjoy his wise counsel. Uncle Jeff, thank you. I wish to thank all the Nananum present. Osaberi Ma Kwisiata II, the Parliament Chief of Ogai traditional area. And I thank you for coming. I wish to thank Nana Kwisienu. I wish to thank Nanaba Iyaba, if she is here. I don't think she is here today. Nana Obumensan, the ninth, Udikro of Gomwa Mampon, and Chidomihene of Gomwa Asen traditional area. My elders, one of my elders. Nana Abba Nkuma the first to Fuhene of Gomua the Rampon. And Fante Fante Hene in the Ashanti region. Fante Heneba in the Ashanti region. I wish to thank Nana Kofiokran, Abrazi Ebusio Pinyin, Otom Aban Pado. I know that was my father's post before he died. Thank you very much, Ebusi Opinion. I wish to thank my brother and friend, Dr. Adaipoku, Registrar National Teaching Council. I wish to thank Professor Jofus Anamomensa, who helped me to discover my call in life. The one my father referred to as Ejana Mwamese, Ejana Mwamese son. <laughs> I wish to also thank Emeritus Professor Usabu Asare. I wish to thank Mr. Cosby Ishen, my biology teacher and assistant headmaster, who later became the headmaster of the only school in Ghana, in Fanspim School. <laughs> in fact, I, I can't, I, I need a lot of time to tell you what Mr. Shen has done for me. You don't have time, so I'll say very little. I remember when I completed the O level and the result came. I had gone through, so I went to the list to see my name. When I went, my name was not there. So I decided to check my Second choice, my big brother, my father figure, Emmanuel, and my father, Emmanuel, they are both Emmanuel, took me to National. We were waiting when my biology teacher, who was then the assistant headmaster, came. I said, hey, Davis, I heard that one. Davis, what are you doing here? I said, I didn't see my name. He said, oh, we picked your form, so you can't get your form here. Go back to Mfanspin. When I went, apparently, I don't know, maybe the typist skipped my name. The headmaster was surprised that my name was not there. He gave me my admission form. That was Prof. Mr. Cosby Shen. He was such a wonderful teacher. I don't think we still have teachers like him. He will meet you in town during vacation and say, Davis, the exams, you didn't do well here. You could have done better if you had done. And he could remember everything about your performance on the street. 
I don't know whether we have teachers who can do that. Sir, thank you very much. He is here, Mr. Eshen. Sir, you can wave. Yes. I wish to thank the College of Professors, all provosts, executive of UTAC, my director, Professor Eric Anane, and all staff of Institute of Education. I wish to thank Mr. Richard Nete and Esther Ejil for their uh, support. When I'm in trouble, I call them even at midnight, they, will, they, they come to my aid. I wish to thank my dean, Professor Mrs. Christine Eduyebua, and all, all staff at the dean's office. I wish to thank my senior most provost, uh, my senior most dean. I'm the senior most provost. So my senior most dean, Professor D.D. Ej, my classmate and brother. I wish to thank all other deans and directors at the College of Education Studies, registrars and staff at the provost's office. I wish to also thank deans, director, and directors from other sections of the university. My sincere thanks go to late Mr. Dr. Akwesi, sorry, late Dr. Akwesi, the former director of Institute of Education. Dr. Akwesi fought hard after he had interviewed me to ensure that I embarked on further studies. I wish to thank him. I wish to also thank those I called big brothers who stood behind me when the going was tough in the beginning. Professor Nathaniel Kwamna Howard and <laughs> Professor Eric Magnus Womot, he is also, I, I'm aware he's also here. I wish to thank Professor Afo. And in fact, the whole university community, cleaners, staff, everybody. Because when I'm coming to the university and I'm stressed and I get to the gate, you see the security giving me fans, prof, prof. <laughs> that reduces my, my tension. I want to thank everybody. My cleaner friends, Kwame Atta and Co. I wish to thank everyone. I wish to thank my past and present students. I wish to thank all principals, tutors, students from our colleges of education here, colleges of education who are here present. I wish to also thank her teachers, teachers and students from UCC Adopted School who are also here. I wish to thank friends from Tribe Ghana Project, all my friends from National Teaching Council where I serve as a board member. My registrar is here, I've thanked him already. I wish to thank provinces from other universities who are here present. When I was thanking my provinces, I forgot to add them, but I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank board members and members from NAT Institute for Industrial, NAT Institute for Research and Industrial Relations Studies, who are also here, colleagues from other universities, including UEW, who are here. I wish to thank the clergy Reverend Professor Suman and Pedro Liberation Church family members who are here. I wish to thank Reverend Humphrey Donto, the district pastor of AG. I wish to thank Reverend George Akwesi Yebua, district treasurer, Assemblies of God, Ghana. Reverend Felix Suman, Agon district Pastor, Assemblies of God, Ghana. Reverend Noah Yao Edunkwa, Maranatha Assemblies of God. I wish to thank him. I wish to thank Reverend Innocent Eshen, Isaac Cole Society, Amy Zion Church. I wish to thank Reverend Isaac Hoxon, if he is here, CCC. I wish to thank my own sister, Reverend Josephine Anna Mama. 
Anglican minister, I wish to thank Evangelist Asare. I forgot to thank one woman. I enjoyed her pie. Her pie was nice. My biology teacher's wife. I don't know why I forgot that. I will carry, she was saying that Davis will carry the water to the house, but she didn't know that it was because of the pie and the drink. <laughs> <laughs> I wish to thank all friends and classmates, Mr. Michael Queenin, Professor Isaac Ayensun, we've been friends for more than 30 years. Dr. Kizzy Hayford, Mr. Nicola Sedu, Dr. J.B. Misata, my MOBA family, MOBA we are family. I have Mr. Charles Loco, if you are here wave, I have my Ebusia Payin, Ebusia Mwa. He is our group Ebusia Payin, and all members of MOBA 91. I wish to thank my mates from Experimental Junior Secondary School, 1987 year group, Edward Afrifa and others. I wish to thank all classmates. I know I started formal education in 1976 at Self Reliance, and I have some classmates here. Self Reliance Nursery, it was nursery. I have classmates who are here with me because we went to nursery, we went to primary school, we went to secondary school. For some of them, we ended up at UCC. That is, Dr. Misata. I wish to thank my mother-in-law and her family. I wish to thank my brothers and sisters-in-law. I have Dr. Nyangsen here, my brother-in-law, and others. I wish to thank my extended family members, one of my cousins who carried me as a toddler, Sister, but unfortunately, she was not able to make it. I wish to thank all cousins, I mean brothers and sisters from my Davis and Asian side. I wish to thank all my nephews and nieces. I can see many of them sitting there. I wish to thank my brothers and sisters. I have Emmanuel, George, Francis, Alfred, Elizabeth, Ruben, Kingsley, Sister Araba, Christy, and all my, I have a big family. I'm coming from, yes, my father had 18 kids. <laughs> yes. My special thanks go to my brother Emmanuel who was not able to attend this program. He is watching us online. He had to cancel his ticket twice. The third time, it was impossible for him to come. He's been a father figure for not me, all my siblings. I remember when I had the opportunity to go to school, when I had to go to sixth form. My dad was already on retirement. That was 91. My father was born in 1930. So by 91, he was retired. So Emmanuel took the prospectors, looked for an empty trunk, and he surrounded all his blue shirts, gray trousers, everything in the prospectors, and went to their brothers and took whatever was in the prospectors that they had. So my first watch I owned belonged to my brother, Professor Francis. Davis attack. He had a nice watch and my brother took it for me that I needed it for school. Asked my mother to bring the ladies' clothes and my father to bring men's clothes. He was such a wonderful brother. And he is still being a wonderful brother. God bless him. <coughs> I wish to thank the organizing team uh, for the wonderful job done. Uh, D Directorate of DPA, Public Affairs. I'm grateful to them. And Mr. Labi, 
Mr. Atasapon, all Richard, all those who made sure that this thing has come to successful end. I want to thank you. In fact, I played very little role in the organization. I had all the time to think about my presentation. God richly bless you. Finally, finally, I wish to thank my wife, Mrs. Etheridge Charlotte Davis, and my children, Emmanuel, Ernestina, Ida, and Jennifer, for all the support and the sacrifice they've made. At times, they go through a lot of stress as we try to achieve a whole lot. I remember last year, I traveled to South Korea. When I came, within a week, I had to go to Kenya. So I told Jennifer that I'm going to, I'm going to travel again. He said, what did you say? I said, I'm going to travel again. He said, go and tell those who are asking you to travel that this time you need an extra bed. <laughs> I'm going with you. Thank you very much for all the sacrifice. Thank you. Let's do it for him one more time. So we are going to witness a brief ceremony we call the robing ceremony. And I'll call on the College of Professors to do us the honest. Let's give them a round of applause as they come up to perform this very important ceremony. On behalf of College of Professors, we would like to receive Professor N.S. Davis into our college. I will therefore request that Professor Gatte Ampia come up here to assist the Vice Chancellor to rope <laughs> Professor Davis. On this note, I welcome Professor Davis into our fold. Thank you very much. Members of the college will take their turns to congratulate him.
Thank you very much. I'll call on the Pro VC, Professor Mrs. Rosman Bohini, to take her turn to congratulate Professor Davis. Thank you, Prof. The Registrar, Mr. Jeff Tay Manuel Onyami, will take his turn. I'll call on Reverend Professor Emmanuel Adobin to also take his turn to congratulate Professor Davis. Professor Jufus Anamwa Minsa. I'll call on Professor F.K. Inunu, Rep of the Minister of Education, Dr. Oseya Widuchum. Dr. Christian Adai Puku, Registrar, National Teaching Council. <laughs> Professor Dora Francisca Dubuando is a former Pro VC UCC. She'll take her turn to congratulate Professor Davis. Professor John Nelson Boa, a former Pro VC as well, if he's here, he'll take his turn. Wife and children. I'll call on other family members here, mother-in-law, brothers and sisters-in-law, nieces, nephews, brothers, sisters who are all here. Kindly come up, take your turn to congratulate Professor Davis. Family members who are here, please. All family members who are here. Nananon, no, no, please sit, he'll come and congratulate you. All families here.
kindly exit from my left if you have congratulated him. Family members, okay, right. Please note that if you have a citation to present, please unwrap it before you come up stage, please. So family members, can you go around, Prof, so we have the group photo? Family members, please come close so you can have a group photo. And this is a citation from family to be presented to Professor Ernest Kofi Davis. A round of applause for the family. Thank you very much, family. I'll call. I'll call on executives of UTAG. Executives of UTAG. Executives of UTAG. UTAG will be followed by the College of Education Studies and they'll present a citation. So I read citation on behalf of UTAG UCC to our professor after delivering his inaugural lecture. The University Teachers Association of Ghana, University of Cape Coast branch UTAG UCC Congratulates Professor Ernest Kofi Davis. We members of UTAG UCC wish to congratulate you as you deliver your inaugural lecture on the topic sociocultural issues, a missing ingredient in mathematics curriculum development and delivery in Ghana on this day, 28th March 2024. We proudly recognize your hard work that has prepared you to achieve this enviable academic pinnacle. As a professor of mathematics education, we believe that you will continue to train, mentor, motivate, and inspire younger colleagues to reach higher heights in their academic pursuits. Congratulations on your well-deserved success. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Tag. College of Education Studies can be approached. Thank you. Kindly exit from my left. College of Education Studies. College of Education Studies will be followed by School of Education Development and Outreach Sedo. College of Education Studies now.
College of Okay, so this is a composition of the School of Education, Development, and Outreach SEDO. We also have Institute of Education. We have the Department of Basic Education. Education student, no, that's it. So they are all on stage now to congratulate the provost of the college. And there are a number of citations to be presented. So the first presentation, the first presentation is going to be by the College of Education Studies. Thank you very much. This is from the College of Education Studies, citation in honor of Professor Ernest Kofi Davis on the occasion of his inaugural lecture. We are extremely proud on the, on the auspicious occasion of your inaugural lecture as a professor of mathematics education and provost of the College of Education Studies. You were appointed as provost of the college in 2019. You earned a second term following a successful review of your performance. Your leadership as the provost of the college for the past five years has been per excellence, marked by tremendous achievements in the academic and non-academic spheres of the college. As a transformational leader, your hard work, dedication to duty, and demonstrable competence has spared the college to greater heights. The College of Education Studies congratulates you, our professor of mathematics education, an expert in curriculum and teaching, and an experienced administrator. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. The next is going to be presented by Sedo. Sedo will make a presentation of a citation as well. So kindly present it. Kindly present it. Yes, please. Please. Yes, please. <laughs> kindly present it. Thank you very much, madam. The next presentation, Institute of Education. Institute of Education. And then the Department of Basic Education. Department of Basic Education. Thank you very much, College of Education Studies. We are grateful. We will call the Education Students Association of Ghana, ISAC. If you're here, please take your turn to congratulate Professor Davis. ISAC. and they will be followed by PhD Mathematics Education Students 2022-2023. ASAG will be followed by PhD Mathematics Students 2022-2023. kindly, so, they're going to make a presentation of a citation to Prof. Thank you very much. PhD Mathematics Education Students, 2022-2023. They'll be followed by PhD Mathematics Education Students, 2023-2024. Twenty twenty two, twenty twenty three PhD mathematics education students.
Thank you. PhD Mathematics Education Students 2023-2024. Now this group will be followed by principals and tutors from colleges of education in Ghana who are present. If we have principals or, and tutors from colleges of education here present, please follow up to congratulate Professor Davis. Head teachers from UCC Adapter Schools, if you're here, you follow up for me. Thank you. Principals and tutors from colleges of education who are, pr who are present. And this group will be followed by head teachers from UCC Adapted Schools. Head teachers from UCC Adapter Schools. Thrive Ghana Project. Thrive Ghana Project. If we have reps of Thrive Ghana Project here, please take your turn to congratulate Professor Davis. Prof's colleagues from University of Education, Winneba, if we have members here. I'll call on the clergy. The clergy. The clergy. The clergy. MOBA 1991 year group, MOBA 99, please make your way up, MOBA 91, please make your way up, and then mates from Experimental Junior Secondary School 1987 year group, MOBA 91 will be followed by 1987 year group of Experimental Junior Secondary School. The 87 year group will be followed by UCC alumni. Executives will help us. Experimental 87 year group. Thank you very much, MOBA 91. Experimental 87 year group. UCC alumni. Thank you very much. Prof, you'd exit from my right and then you shake hands with Nananum as you make your way to your seat.
Let's do it for Professor Davis again on a successful delivery of an inaugural lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me acknowledge the following individuals. The Vice Chancellor of University of Cape Coast who chaired this event, Professor John Zinya Kubuampong. Please help me acknowledge Professor Mrs. Rosamond Boahini, the Pro Vice Chancellor UCC. Mr. Jeff Tay Emmanuel Onyame is Registrar UCC. We also acknowledge former Vice Chancellor UCC, Professor Joseph Gate Ampia. <laughs> Professor FKE Nunu is representative of the Minister of Education, Dr. Oseyao Educhum. <laughs> we also acknowledge Professor Jofos Anamwa Mensa, former Vice Chancellor UEW and former Pro VC UCC. <laughs> we also acknowledge Professor Eric Magnus Wilmot if he's here with us. He is formerly Vice Chancellor of CK Tedham University of Technology and Applied Sciences. Thank you very much, sir. Help me acknowledge Professor George Kate Odru, former Pro Vice Chancellor UCC. <laughs> Professor Dora Francisca Dubuando, former Pro Vice Chancellor UCC. <laughs> Professor John Nelson Bois, former Pro Vice Chancellor UCC. We also acknowledge Osabe Makwisata II, Ogwa Manhin. <laughs> Nana Kwekwenu III is Manrehin of Ogwa Traditional Area. <laughs> Nana Obu Mensa IX is Odikro Gumwa Mampong and Chidomhin of Gumwa Asin Traditional Council, Nifat Division. <laughs> Nana Bankum I is Tufuhima Gumwa de Rampong. We also acknowledge Ebusunya Penyin Kofilate Okran. We acknowledge Professor Moses Jojo Egan, Provost of the College of Agriculture and Natural Sciences. We acknowledge Professor Isaac Galion, he is a former Provost of the College of Distance Education. We also acknowledge Professor S.Y. Mensa, former Provost of uh, the College of Agri and Natural Sciences. We also acknowledge all GES staff who are here. Thank you for being a part of this event. And to the College of Professors, Professor Dennis Aheto, Professor John Gatti, Professor David Isuman, Professor P. K. Buabasua, Reverend Professor Kankambuidu, Professor George Katie Odru, Professor John Minsa, Professor Daniel Ejapong, Professor Yao Ankuma, Professor Eugene Date and Professor F. E. Amukwando. Thank you all so much for being a part. Let's give them a round of applause. Please help me welcome our chair once again to give his closing remarks with a round of applause. Professor Davis has covered the topic that he chose as a social cultural issues and missing ingredients in mathematical curriculum development and delivery in Ghana. The lecture was relatively short, deep, and insightful. I don't know how I'll be able to measure deep using home mathematics. But he was able to conceptualize home or everyday mathematics as a missing ingredient in mathematics curriculum development and delivery. He gave the Atlan of his lecture and I want to share with you some of the things that I learned. There's one thing that all of us should notice, that as lecturers, 
we serve as role models for others. Because in his lecture theater, he was using somebody as a role model, trying to sort of develop himself to become that person. And I also learned that African countries cannot be found among countries that perform well in mathematics. He focuses research on why um, performance of minorities in developed countries and Africa students are not doing well in mathematics. He was, he, he was able to tell us that every country is able to generate its own mathematics by counting, locating, measuring, playing, and designing. And he, his studies also covered ethno-mathematics, where we learn whole mathematics or everyday mathematics and then mathematics that is spelled with capital M. He showed the implications of everyday mathematics. So it tells us that when we are teaching, we should be able to bring down teaching to our own circumstances or surroundings. Springing from there, that is the known to the unknown. Linguistics in mathematics, the halves. Then, he also showed us values in mathematics. And that values drive performance and achievements. He also indicated that we have three pairs of mathematical values. Objectivism and rationalism, controversy, progress, mystery and openness. And he says that all this should be captured by our textbooks so that it will have impact on our students. He proposed a three-tier model. First, starting with enculturation stage, transition stage, and acculturation stage. All showing that we learn from the known to the unknown. He concluded by saying that Students are labeled as weak in our circumstances, but actually they are not weak, except that we are not able to teach them well, to actually bring out, I mean, to actually focus on what they know from the home to actually bring them to the, um, the new concepts in Western education. And it is because we always ignore our indigenous knowledge the white man or the colonizers made us understand that whatever we have is not important. But they, what they brought to us is important and that can help us to develop. As teachers, we must appreciate what we have, inculcate in our children so that they can go to fit into the society they belong. Then he also talk, he talked about values by conclusion, values in mathematics should be projected in both curriculum development and implementation. So textbook writing is very important. He will also want us to explore innovative teaching. And we should design our classrooms to fit the learning or to support the learning, teaching and learning. So as teachers and as the policy makers, as Traditional leaders, let us all help to support education. Because if we are able to develop our country well by educating our people, they will be able to generate more wealth. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Chair. We will take the closing prayer and I'll call on Reverend Professor Kankam waited to give to us the honors. Let's welcome him with a round of applause.
humbly let us be on our feet as we register our appreciation unto the Most High God for what he has done for us. Indeed, Father, we raise our hands upon you and up to you. We sought your direction and it is how far you have brought us. The understanding is that unless the Lord builds the house, those who labor, labor in vain. We are witnesses to the things that you have done for us, your son. Oh, we have heard the voice. The word has been fulfilled. Our eyes have seen what you've been able to do through him. We pray, oh Lord, that knowledge that he has come out with may be useful to support our nation and beyond. Above for us, we depart him. We ask him that your grace will go with us. Now the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's kindly remain standing as the Vice Chancellor recesses with his team. Nananum will follow suit as well. Thank you very much. Let's all kindly disperse. Thank you. <laughs> 